What's up guys? We are here today with Final Kenpachi, who is a free-to-play streamer in Raid, also does YouTube content. What's up Kenpachi? Hey Shinny, thank you so much for having me. Hopefully you're doing well, my friend. Thank you, I'm doing well actually. Not to talk about my personal issues, but I was a little bit sick just recently, but it's over. Anyway, so you made recently, I guess yesterday, a video about the new blessings and pretty much everybody has been talking about them. Let me pull them instantly because we're gonna talk about the blessings today, but you, you went through all of them, of course, and I think you had like 20 minute about 20 minute video about them. But what do you think about the new blessings overall? I mean, it's nice to have a more option in the game, but I wish the options are more uh, useful, you know, like more like, oh man, I need to be think about which blessing to choose instead of just going to ship. I really wish the, there is a competition on the ship, you know, but we are going to talk about them. Yeah, you too, so. I, I was obviously going to bring up ship, but it, it's definitely going to uh, come, come up. But I, we could individually go, go through all of them one by one and then talk about a bit like overall and general what blessings are good but just to point out here that this shouldn't have come as surprise to anybody because we had this locked icon in the uh oh i guess you can see it right now we had this locked icon in the in-game like uh, blessings from the get-go and it, it was kind of a weird thing that blessings were released a good time ago and we had this thing for a while and we originally assumed that it's just a new branch of blessings but since they didn't release it people were kind of speculating all sorts of weird things but why do you think it took so long time for them to release the last branch i mean not gonna lie i was thinking this last blessing slot gonna be special you know like uh, for yeah, example that's what maybe I was thinking. mythical maybe void blessing you know a little exactly. bit more op exactly. but they there is no difference between them i mean they are just normal blessing i mean like rare blessing epic blessing uh, legendary blessing originally i thought they just didn't have time to do the last one and they Maybe. were gonna do it a bit later but since it took so long time and now we have like primal champions and so on i also thought that the last blessing slot would be some kind of special one and just not the new brands of blessings yeah and okay I, I guess we can talk about it after going through all of them but i'm gonna assume that okay never mind we'll talk about it later anyway so if we quickly go through them, and I don't want to go through all of them individually too long, but the first uh, rare blessing, Divinity of Harmony, increases the value of heal granted by continuous heal buffs placed by this champion. Each continuous heal buff placed by this champion restores a portion of target's destroyed max HP, and then it goes up to uh, increase the value of heal granted by continuous heal buffs by 30% and restores destroyed max HP by 30%. So does this have some kind of relevant use? Is it just like, is this relevant even on like Sand Devil or any content? Yeah, I actually, this is one of my favorite ones. Curse, Curse uh, City? Not really, I'm more like thinking about, you know, only champion who can use that has to be a continuous heal buff, right? So yeah. it's basically boosting your heal you are getting there. And like, I'm thinking like more like solo dungeon champion, like Bed Alcazar, you know, mm. he have a continuous heal and at the same time uh, poison. So he's going to get a more heal, right? Uh, destroy max HP part not going to work on the most of the dungeon. Like Urugirim as well, the epic champion, have a similar ability is the Bed Al, knocked again. Uh, any champion can get a benefit from it. Uh, instead of to give them Brimstone, maybe Brimstone is still going to be strong. You know, I like six star Brimstone versus six star that. It's all about like aggressive or the defensive play, right? If you can keep your Bedal alive, then Brimstone is better. You don't have to worry about that. But if you have a little bit uh, bad gear, this can definitely help you to build him uh, more squishy so you can keep him alive. But cursed is stuff like that. Yeah, wh I mean, wh what I was thinking that it's not like continuous heal buffs are super relevant in any kind of end game content. Like, your Hydro Runs or your endgame arena teams are not going to rely on it. Yeah, just use Maricha Hill, right? <laughs> yeah, but, but but maybe you have like two-star blessings on your like rare champions on your Curse City rooms or whatever. Maybe it's a little bit useful there, but yeah, I don't think it's even that big deal. But Yeah, very niche, very niche for that, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I think it's okay. For rare blessing, it's useful. It's okay. 
I might use it on some champion, but it's definitely not going to be game breaking. Do you have anything else to say about that one? No, we can move to the next one. Okay, so then the next one, Divinity of Harmony. Wait, am I just giving the wrong names? The first one was Nuris. Somebody else did this on my Discord, and I was screenshot about it as well. And then category, now I'm doing yeah. the same thing. Okay, so Flarium is just baiting us. So the first one was Nuris, and the second one is Nature's Bounty. But and the bracket is called Divinity of Harmony. So these are some kind of like I don't know, druid blessings or heal blessings or whatever you want to call it. That's clearly the team. I mean, you see like everything is green and you see like... I, know, I call them Sylvian Watcher blessing. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you see like uh, trees, health potions, like yeah, wines, nature. this kind of nature stuff, yeah. I, why would you call this in English? It's like uh, balance? Is it called balance? What do you call this? Yeah, balance, yeah. 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 Okay, it's so. a weird question you ask me English question, you know? <laughs> yeah, because uh, yeah, b both of us have the free to play English, so it's like uh, pot calling kettle black. But yeah, so whenever this champion applies a debuff, has a chance to place a greater version of this debuff. For example, fifty percent decrease uh, decrease resistance instead of twenty five. I think this sounds actually kind of interesting, and you go up to sixty percent with six star blessing. It's kind of the same with all of the blessings in general, that it's meant to be very um, inconsistent and then much more consistent or fully consistent at 6 star. But most of the new ones, they're all capped at like 60% or 50% or whatever. I hate it. I feel like they should be 100% at 6 what star. What a range. But I mean, there is nothing 100% on this game. Actually, like, I don't know nobody talking about, you know, like uh, some champion skill, for example, uh, Lydia, right? Mm. It's saying like a percent. After you book, it's gonna be under percent, but it's theoretically not under percent. I mean, I feel like Pilarum need to be oh. renamed them because they anybody can be sweet them because of that. Oh, okay, I understand. I mean, your... it's a hidden hidden thing. It's not written on the game, and some people doesn't know that actually. Yeah, or, yeah, definitely it should say in tooltips that you can. Not seven percent. Yeah, you say. Yeah, that you can three percent. And by the way. Like, they don't explain the math, like, how you calculate the resistance versus accuracy and so on. Yeah. I understand that maybe you don't have it, like, everywhere in the game, but it should be somewhere in the info section, since we I do agree. have everything. Also, including champion damage multipliers. I don't understand why they... I 100% agree with because that. Because, like... You, you know that I have brought this up many times in the CC chat, but, like, every time they give us information about new champions, they don't give the multipliers, they just give the kit, and then we have to wait for, like... Hell Hades or Saf to data mine it, and then they also hate the data miners when they data mine it, but they force us to rely on the information about information from data miners because they keep the keep the stuff secret. I mean whenever they release like DPS champion, new champion, you know, I'm like, alright guys, it's uh, kids are looking good, but end of the day we need to wait to see multiplier, right? I cannot say he's good or the bad, you know, before to see that. Like I got jabated on this uh Fatalis. Man, yeah. He's looking amazing, right, on the paper. I hit, hit like, wet noodle. Then I say, uh, after that, they released the Narcissus. And I said, like, all right, guys, like, Narcissus, again, looking good, but I don't want to be uh, Fatalis uh, think again. Maybe it's going to be bad, you know, so... Uh, but uh, his multiplier was good, so... Yeah, I, I think... <laughs> I don't know how much we should talk about it, but I think on Narcissus specifically, I think some people, like... I don't know how they found out the multipliers, but I think some people knew the multipliers even before before the files were in game, before the data mining. But we wouldn't, we couldn't be sure that it's actually true. But some people knew the right multipliers beforehand. Like there was some kind of leak about him, so we were kind of expecting him to be good. And actually, I remember that lots of people were being super skeptic skeptical about Narses, and in Mad, lots of people were saying that he's gonna, like, <laughs> he's gonna change the meta. And people yeah, you didn't, said that I remember that. Yeah, people didn't really believe it at the start. They were very skeptical, and I kind of understand. But so, I feel like this uh, Nature's Bounty Blessing, not Divinity of Harmony, I feel these two first rare ones are kind of similar, that they might be decent on, like, Cursed City stuff, like, yeah. lots of rare champions or epic champions, they might have the first level of these debuffs or whatever, and maybe it's a little bit useful, but it's definitely not in-game stuff or is there some some champions where this would be great on i mean some people thinking like early game you know you don't have a mini champion but
but on the early game you can get like War Maiden, she already have like 60% decrease defense, 100% chance and the uh, uh, Tirton cooldown, right? War Maiden, which is you can farm her, right? On the yeah. campaign. So, but on the Cursity, the game is forcing us to use, I don't know, some X champion who have like lower version of the decrease defense. And uh, the champion mostly gonna be rare champion, so we cannot use like any epic or the legendary blessing on it. So I think this blessing for debuffer like that can be nice. Yeah, I I hate that part about Curse City because it's not like it's really that hard, but you're forced to use like your 200 best champion in your like 50th best nuke set, and of course it's gonna be hard at that point. But it's just uh, it's not like it's not actually hard if you actually put your gear and champions but you're not gonna have silver and it's super time consuming to like swap your gear around for yeah every single floor i don't like the design to be honest but that's topic for another video okay then we get to the epic blessings and we have nature's rat increases the damage inflicted by this champion for every debuff they successfully placed except defaults placed by gear sets and it goes up to 30%, 5% per buff. And I don't think this is like... Tranda has been something that has come up recently. That Tranda is dominating Hydra. And Tranda team is like many, many, many times better than the second best Hydra team. But I think some pretty good Hydra champions might get a massive benefit out of this mastery. Or what you think about it in the right situation. Yeah, but uh, it's only for the champion who plays a debuff, right? It's increasing their uh, yeah, damage. I, I, so Tranda doesn't have a debuff. Yeah, that's why that's why I mentioned, because he's by far better than the other ones. But a couple ones that come into my mind, actually both on Undead and Demon Spawn, we do have Primals that have debuffs and rely on uh, mm -hmm. debuffs. I think Carnage's passive like scales damage from the, from the stuff and he does debuffs. And then there's the Undead one. Which I'm pretty sure is clearly meant to be like a Hydra killer. <laughs> Though it's like impossible to um, compete with Tranda. But he does like mm -hmm. trillions of debuffs. So I think I'm not the mad guy. I didn't really like get into the super specifics about it. But I'm pretty sure it's going to be useful on some champions in Hydra. Yeah, but let me ask you a counter attack question. Like, let's say you have a six star on this champion, right? Will you prefer that blessing or the cruelty? I mean, Crushing Grant. Uh, well, okay, so cru Cruelty is definitely better than... No, no, Crushing Rant, Crushing Rant. What, by Crushing Rant? Uh, for Hydra, Hydra is the, let's say, Nightmare difficulty. It's a 310 level, right? Yeah. So it's going to be ignored 31% the defense. 31%? Yeah, it's a... I believe 1% for every level, so... If you can put... Oh, the, yeah, uh, dude, okay. I'm, I'm so out of the loop that I... I didn't even think about it because obviously I'm not getting blessings on my Hydra champions. I f I totally forget. I'm just thinking about Arena. I'm thinking it's six percent. What what are you talking about? Thirty percent. But yeah, I mean, I guess that's the reason why everybody's getting blessings on Tranda. Which uh, wait, where is it? There. There we go. Yeah. So it's per level, and Hydra is three fifty at Nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe five star. Uh, anything uh, below six star. The blessing we just mentioned, uh, Nature Wrath, uh, can be useful because Creation Rant, uh, anything below six star is totally useless. Yeah, so... you good that you were fact, che fact checking me on that because I totally forget about that part. I guess it could be useful at lower levels because Crossing yeah. Rant isn't gonna be relevant unless you have so it you prefer 31 percent ignore defense over 30 percent increase damage, right? No, yeah, of course, it's way on the Hydra, especially on the Hydra. Yeah, For yeah. the Arena wise, too, like. There is some decent champion who can cast the debuff on the arena, like Ragash. Mm. They have actually two debuff, right? The Chris Defense and the uh, Stun. Yeah. Staltus, uh, Carnage, you just mentioned. But to land your debuff, you need to give them some accuracy. Yeah. yeah Maybe you... for enemy DPS, you don't need a crazy eye accuracy. Yeah. Wukong the... as well, actually. But for the support character, mostly your accuracy not going to be enough. And another thing is chip. <laughs> <laughs> like are gonna be <laughs> prefer yeah, it, to make it, it's definitely not better in arena in arena you yeah. definitely go with cruelty because you're capped at 60 percent if you're like on saldos for instance that has like multiple aoe skills and the, the other one is double hitter you would if you really want to get damage then you will just go where is it i for always forget where it is you will definitely go with cruelty because like the double hit is gonna proc it twice and if you can decrease the defense by 40 percent that's a big deal but 
obviously. Or Brazil, you are gonna yeah, or you can give all your championship. Yeah, yeah, or yeah, like if you want damage, then you're gonna go with this on like oh, AoE champion, but then there's other utility. Like if you just have one star, maybe you go with lightning gates or whatever about So or, rip also very decent to you know can really help to kill the one HP target. Yeah, by the way, now that I think about it, I mean I knew about the crossing rent thing on Hydra. I just totally forgot about it because I I don't it's way above my pay grade. I mean I don't have Yumeko or Tu or Shu Chen or anything like that. Yeah. But that's goddamn OP. They should totally nerf it on like Hydra. I guess it's meant to be a thing for whales that there's a reason to get blessings and get six star Blessing on Trunga. I mean, I don't have any 6-star uh, DP champion, so didn't, yeah. <laughs> didn't dude, manage the visit yet. Dude, that's super OP. How many champions you have at 6-star Blessing? Uh, I focus on support first, so Duchess 6-star, which is I'm not using her anymore, sad. Yeah, same. Sifi 6-star, I got an Ankara 5-star, I'm working on her, I can purchase 6-star, I got a Essence finally, but I just see need to see on the shop. That's all. Okay, Only so, two champions 6-star. So, I okay. mean, if we are not counting Epic or the Rare champion, of course. Okay, so we're both the same. I also have two champions at 6-star Blessing, just like you, Datsus, and then the second one is Rotos. And of course, both of them are kind of uh, not good right now because of Narses and him ignoring their passives, and both of these champions relying on surviving their passives. So there went like eight months of grinding or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> that, that kind I, of I wish I can get uh, my uh, coin back from the Duchess, like I really wish. Dude, I, I was talking about it, uh, I don't know if you saw it, I think I said it yesterday in CC chat or maybe a couple days ago, but um, in some other games you have this kind of similar mechanic and this is in those games it's a token that you generally buy or you can get it super hard in game, but there's a token that you can like change it from one champion to another. I hope Raid does this, but if Raid does, I don't think they would do it, but if they did do it, it would definitely only be from cash shop to be honest, so. Yeah, because Raid doesn't have a system like that, you know, people will invest money or the resources on the champion. Yeah. If the Raid is nerfed them, they are going to take a loss of attention. But if they somehow give all resources back, the investment on the champion, you know, then uh, they can nerf whatever they want. Okay, so. but yeah, so okay, tell me about it because I'm sure we have similar feelings. So how, how long does it take for you to grind one champion to six star blessing? I mean, I wasn't lucky to get her uh, soul, so I literally grind her from the one star. I believe it took like six, seven months. Yeah, yeah, six to eight months. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Th that's how long it takes. I mean, you're still farming it every day at the highest level, and you're using yeah, gems. Yeah, and I'm not using extra gem too every not, day. Uh, only on the Sundays. Yeah, so. on, on Sundays. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I mean, that, that's the normal way, like how low spenders or free to play players do it. I think most players do it that way, and it takes you six to eight months to get one champion. And then you obviously went with Duchess because he was your best champion at one time, yeah. I guess. And yeah. and what now? Well, I'll get to Sifi uh, after that, so she dropped very quickly. And after that, they released Ankara, and Ankara is way better than Duchess, I'm sorry. Yeah, I have said the same thing on my videos, that often I will use Duchess in the battles in Live Arena because I need to have a Polymorph. But if I could use Ankara and he had the Polymorph, I wouldn't pick Datsus. I'm only picking Datsus just because she happens to have the 6-star Blessing. It's not, a, it's not a fun position to be in and it, it does suck that so much. Yeah, I mean, I keep say, I've keep i been saying actually that just is kind of not that great. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying she's trash, but that just like, if you look at the just skill real quickly, like her A2 is the 4-turn cooldown, her revive doesn't have anything about Terminator boost. So Duchess reviving, then I'm killing them again. Like, you know, not, not a big deal. The only thing is Duchess, like, you can use her, like, ultimate death knight. You know, let's say any maver, Rotos. You can put your Duchess, like, 6 piece stone skin, you know. She can cast the whale, so Rotos need to attack your Duchess under stone skin, stuff like that. So, again, like, she's very good champion, don't get me wrong, guys. Like, still got tier champion, but in the end game, live arena, like, gold four stuff like that. We have a, like, mythical champion there, lots of mythical champion. And Sifi, Galatair, Star Sage, man, he's amazing. Yeah, the thing is that the champions today, or nukers, they have more damage than they used to, and they have utility that they can ignore stuff like charge it. And back in the day, when the meta was to have defense team, like let's say you have Ursuka and Dutchess in your team, you have very tanky teams that cannot be one shot, but everything can be one shot right now. It's just that maybe, maybe you have reaction or stone skin, so you can't be one shot right now, but you definitely can afterwards. 
so you can't really make a tanky style team. And I agree with what you said that Duchess Revive is, is not that good because it, it doesn't revive with any turn meter. Generally, your team is just gonna die again before you get the team, unless they can be tanky to survive. But in the old metas, I mean, she does put the whale, and I think normal whale reduces damage taken by 7.5%, mm -hmm. and perfect whale does it at 15%, uh, so double that. And then you also have her passive that reduces all damage from AoE by 25%. And then if you pair that with, let's say, Ursuka passive or Necret passive and Bulwark and Guardian set, that used to be meta at one time. And of course, then Duchess was very good, mostly just because she was there and made your team tanky. But that isn't really relevant right now because Narciss is literally gonna ignore all of that. And even outside yeah, especially of... Especially the bolster. He loved the bolster. Yeah. It, literally, Darcis is a liability for your team right now because... Yeah, they, her A1 terrible against Narcissus. Yeah, the, the A1 gives her a shield and your weakest ally a shield, meaning that she's going to be one-shotted. That's why I'm not using her in defense yeah. at all, even though she's one of my two champions with six-star blessing. By the way, I'm not going to use either one of these two in my Classic Arena push next week at all. The two champions that I happen to have with Polymorph, so... It is what it is. That life. Okay, this is kind of side point, but like, so what do you think, what should be done about that? Because, you know, we have been talking about this, that Barium always points to Eurogrim nerf and that they don't want to nerf things, but then they still indirectly nerf things with like introducing new mechanics and so on. So like, how, how can we get like a, a solution that uh, both Plarium and the hardcore players will be like satisfied by. I mean, I don't know what they are cooking, but I cannot wait the solution for the Armands. You know, like he's like yeah, but but this, it's the same with Armands and as it as it was with Narcissus, they have been very direct. They haven't been like dodging the question. They have literally said that they didn't want to nerf Taras and they don't want to nerf Armands. So, what are you gonna do about that? And yeah, I I understand like. I think uh, many CCs are just very hard on the board that we need to nerf Armands, and I agree that he's OP. I think the argument that most people are making is that there's other OP champions, and if they just nerf Armands and not the other ones, like Galatir or whoever, Grixia, it's like the one fusion that Randa. was... Yeah, the, the, yeah, the, the, yeah, and like the, they nerf... Um, what was his name? Madman? They nerfed Madman, they nerfed Cadaver. Cor Corporal and Cadaver. They are rare champion, come on now. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but I mean, they nerfed... I know, stuff. it's not fair. Yeah. Well, I cannot wait, uh, they are answer on the Wixville, you know, Wixville and Yannicka. Thanks to the Bronco, he... Breaking the game <laughs> on uh, I, the test server every day. Uh, honestly, I, I kind of tuned out, out, out of that because, as you can already see, how I forget how the crossing rent works, that it actually is way better on Hydra than it is in PvP, mm -hmm. because you know that I mostly focus on PvP. But in my clan right now, we're basically trying to do as little Hydra points as possible. We're kind of taking reverse of what some other clans do. Right now we're telling everybody to cap at 60, 650 million and not try to do more than that. And we're gonna see how much points the other people do. If they do a lot, we're just gonna let them win. And we're, yeah. we're gonna try to get one of the top three spots and not yeah. <laughs> we don't want to do, do the, the highest points that we can and then get a super hard enemy next time yeah so. this is what most of the clan are doing because if you keep increasing your stuff then you are going to face the trander comps trander clan right and that's not definitely a fun content so you need to tank like four week to do that we lower your uh uh, matchmaking because it's taken your four week performance it's kind of suck you know like four week you are not going to win any clash that's kind of suck to be honest but it is always the game works so yeah and okay let me i i ha had that not prepared but i think i can find it on my <laughs> okay that shows on the screen i i'll have to remove remove that part later but i think i have somewhere in my pixels that they did the um quality of life uh art wait you know what I'm talking about, the roadmap. They did give us the roadmap. Oh, yeah. And in the roadmap... Uh, damn, I have so many pixels that it's going to be impossible. Okay, <laughs> I can't find it. I, I do have it in my pixels, but... So they did the quality of life roadmap. I'll add it, like... I can just add it later, I guess. But 
yeah. in the quality of life roadmap, they did say that they're gonna. I don't recall the exact wording, but precipitation reward. Yeah, yeah. But they said something about rebalancing the hydro rewards or whatever. So I'm assuming that everybody will get accessories at some point. Hopefully, hopefully yeah. that's what we are hoping for. That will be nice. Yeah, and it, it, like. If it's like every clan gets, let's say, four accessories and the rank one gets six, I think that's fine. I mean, for the amount of effort that the top clans have to do to get those two extra accessories, I think that would be fair. But Yeah, I mean, it's Hydra, like Tranda, like I don't want to mention that on your video. I talk about a lot, but like I made a hard team, very decent hard team on my account, and I barely reached one billion damage on the hard team. Without broken champion, I'm using like Karima, Ruel, stuff oh, like yeah, that. Mitrella. Yeah, without Tranda, yeah, okay. Yeah, then uh, with my friend account last week, I tried Tranda comp, perfect Tranda comp on the Nightmare difficulty. Yeah, and you just do, she, do that I all did the time. 63 billion on the Nightmare difficulty. Yeah. And you know what? All I do is the kill in the head when they spawn. Yeah, One shot I know, I know. And, and you can run a Tranda that is like 150 speed or whatever. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah, because Shuzan is a boostener. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there, there's a reason why I kind of uh, I gave up on Hydra. Not, I never, I never got hard into Hydra. I never wanted to participate. In. If it was up to me, I feel like everybody should get the max amount of accessories as long as they do a certain level of damage, and maybe they can get some other extra rewards. That <laughs> maybe you can get a couple of sacreds if you finish rank one or whatever. But I don't like the idea that. The stone skin accessories and protection accessories that are super game breaking, they are yeah. gate kept this way. So, I mean, in the clan boss, everybody can then get the max keys. So, why can't we have that? But okay, so your opinion about the nature sprat basically was that uh, I was wrong and I agreed that I was wrong. It's actually not that useful. You could use it when you don't have six star blessing exactly. or a few specific champions, but crossing rent is open. Or, we both agree, Crossing Rain should be nerfed on Hydra, right? Ignoring, yeah, I mean, ignoring she's still, I mean, like, if you're talking about, like, Tronda, she's still gonna do absurd number, like, yeah, but ignore, there's no difference between 60 billion and 40 billion, in my opinion, but yeah. Ignoring 35% of defense with one master. I mean, it's a 1% for each level, so Hydra has a 310 level on the Nightmare difficulty, so... I thought it was 350, okay, whatever, my bad. Is it not 350? What is 350? I think some bosses are 350. I don't know. No, no, Hydra is a Triton. I'm pretty sure about that. Yeah, I'm like sure you're right because I I don't really think about Yeah, it's okay, Triton. Yeah, Triton level. Okay, so anyway, it gives you more, it gives you similar, somewhere between Savage and Merciless, permanently from Blessing. And yes. the other Blessing generally don't give you that massive benefits outside of like maybe Polymorph and that's it. But most of them are not like game breaking. So. I think that's way too much, because if you look at the damage charts, you know how massive deal ignore defense is. I always talk about the fact that people like to build everything on crit damage and speed set, so that their champion looks better on paper, with like Savage and 2p speed or whatever. Even when Cruel is way better, and they kind of ignore the ignore defense part, which is much bigger deal than 20%, 20 crit damage or... 15% attack or defense or whatever. I mean, especially against the high defense uh, target, you know, ignore defense, which, which is the high drive, very high defense. Yeah, and of course, every target in PvP as well. But I think in mm -hmm. PvP, if, if we talk about high level PvP, you will see enemies, let's say, at four to 6,000 defense. But I think, uh, I think the Hydra heads have some varying levels. I think. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think on Nightmare, the lowest one is like 3,000, but then there's a couple that is like 10,000 or whatever. Yes, yeah, something like that, something like that. Some of them very, very tanky. Yeah, I think there's like one that is much lower than others, then another one that is similar, and then everybody else is like 6,000 plus defense at least. Okay, so then we get to the next blessing, Neutralize. Speaking of Hydra, basically you will uh, not weak hit against Poison Cloud. And it's 60%. 60 60% at, at 6 star blessing. 8 months of farming yeah, for this. Yeah, 6 star blessing. Do, do you think it's going to be worth farming 8 months of Iron Twins to have one champion with 60% chance to not weak hit on Poison Cloud? 
I mean, not hitting weak attack uh, on the uh, uh, enemies under uh, poison cloud doesn't mean the rest of your team also gonna do that, right? Unless everybody have a 6 star uh, disbelieving. Because unless your champion with that blessing has a HP burn, then he can place a HP burn on them, right? Yeah. Then the uh, rest of your team can also normal attack. But then if you take a look at the champion in the game, you know, so Mordecai, for example, can place HP burn. It's not attack skill. Enemies under poison cloud can do that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Not the best option, but yeah, there is a Geomaster can do that. I know it's a single target, but Geomaster is still very solid, you know? Yeah. And obviously some legendary version, Tumesia, weirdly can do that. Wait, was I it there's... was it Mordecai Sacred Order? Do I recall wrong? Uh, I uh, oh no, no he, he is, yeah, he is, he is, yeah. Okay. okay, my bad, I put, <laughs> put the screen so you couldn't see. Yeah, yeah, Mordecai was Sacred Order. He, he used to be very popular at the start. I don't think he's yeah. very popular right now because the Hydra meta has gone up yeah, so the much. The thing is only 4 turn cooldown is the weak point of the Mordecai, but again, early game, mid game, of course you can use it, you know, you don't have to worry about the uh, poison cloud at all. Yeah. Because that's not the attack skill. Uh, obviously, legendary champion, Sufrion, man. Sufrion is, can do that the same without this blessing. Yeah. You can place HP burn under enemy's poison cloud, so. Uh, honestly, I feel like this kind of blessing is meant for early or mid game players, and it would be super good for them. You will, There is no reason to use this in end game because if you use something like Tranda, you're literally never gonna have the heads up anyway. No. And if you use any other type of team, which you shouldn't because Tranda is way better, but if you do, then you're gonna have like generally block buff, step buff, or burns or something else. You're not just gonna like yeah. br brute force and wait out for the poison cloud because poison In cloud. Perfect scenario, you are not gonna let them to use the poison cloud. You are gonna be like. Exactly. Be yeah, block buff them or something like that in the perfect scenario. Obviously, life is not perfect, but I don't think. Uh... Because of the bad RNG, I don't think it's worth, you know? Yeah, because if they do get it, then it to totally like... If Poison Cloud happens, it often can mean the end of high to run, so like... It's not yeah. a good mechanic. Honestly, I feel like they... I don't like the 60%, it should be 100%. I feel like they should make this like... Since it's epic only, they... It could have hundred percent chance to ignore it at like not six star level at, but let's say maybe like four star level. I think that would be for would be fair because it would still be very tough grind for early or mid game players. But then somebody might actually use it. But now I feel like it's completely like worthless. I wish this is for like anything, you know, any weak attack converted to normal attack. Yeah, the, okay. Like they... Affinity Breaker. Actually, you can make a combo with the Affinity Breaker. Maybe, I actually don't remember the percent right now on the Affinity Breaker, but maybe with the Affinity Breaker champion wave that on the 6 star, can we actually make it 100%? It... You know, like, can you imagine loss of the comp? We cannot do it just because of the weak Affinity. Yeah. It could be amazing. But it's just Poison uh, Cloud exclusive, which is Hydra. Yeah, I don't have Affinity Breaker, but I thought it was like, actually, a few 50%. Yeah, 50%, yeah. And obvi so not obviously they're not going to stack. I don't think you're going to get guaranteed uh, like non-weak yeah. hits with these two. So, But that will be cool, you know. Not only Poison Cloud, it's just against the weak attack. That will be nice. Yeah, I like this mechanic. I feel like I think it's kind of a team with this new blessing. that It almost feels like they have good ideas. But these are just useless generally. I mean, the first two are like the rare ones are like okay. You can use them on your like your rare champions that you're forced to Which use. Which is good. Your yeah, champion it, can get a benefit. It's, it's useful, not relevant in like I guess Curse City is endgame, but it's not like it's not what you're looking for. Both of these epic blessings though, they're like Poison Cloud is or neutralize is never used. Nature Strat may be usable on a couple of champions in very specific situation, but nothing like, uh, nothing that you're looking for, but not, nothing that you would actually grind blessing to use this specific blessing. You would, you will not buy your uh, split souls from the shop to get one of these blessings, right? Mm -hmm. Only if you happen to pull it on like some random champion. Yeah. Okay, so then <laughs> we, then we can get to the legendary, legendary. Yeah, and these are supposed to be the big boys like Polymorph or whatever that you might really want to get. And spoiler alert, I don't think these are going to be super interesting. And they have the same issue that the other ones do as well, that 
or at least the first one that it's not guaranteed, but Harmonic Impulse deals this champion's turn meter whenever they lose their turn because of fear or true fear debuff, also decreases the cooldown of the skill they attempted to use whenever their turn is lost due to a true fear debuff, and then at max rank resets the cooldown of this skill of the skill this champion attempted to use and fills turn meter by 50%. So, first of all, how much do you even see fears in game? I guess there's like two situations that you might see some fears on Hydra, of course, but fear on Hydra is so big deal, and there's other ways to deal with that, like having some kind of immunity or cleanse, or having the perfect whale up. It's obviously or the shamal. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that's kind of what I meant with the immunity. But there's other ways to deal with it that are consistent. I mean, this one isn't consistent. W what do you think about this? I mean, it's consistent actually on the six star. You know, like uh, it's gonna be reset your cooldown and the fill your tormentor. But fill tormentor fifty percent doesn't mean you are gonna get oh, extra turn. Yeah, yeah. You're still gonna lose your uh, turn. Like for example, we was thinking about that on the arena against the Taras, Warlord, for example, right? But Warlord gonna uh, lose his turn, then it's gonna boost his turn meter by 50% when this proc, which is he's gonna die after that. So you still need a stone skin Warlord against the Taras team. So on the arena, I really don't know why. I feel like Plarium still thinking like fear or the true fear debuff are useful in the arena because yeah. like the thing they change on the Fortus only his multiplier was so bad. Like, you can't even use the skill in the arena and you are boosting his multiplier of the skill that you cannot use. Secret skill, I mean. They yeah. recently uh, announced the rebalance update for the Vitruus. Man, like, you saw that, right? Vitruus A1. We, we can, we can was pleasant. Was Pelissa fear? They changed the true fear. Wow. Like, wow. Amazing buff. Pelissa, like... Yeah, and that's what... Unbelievable, you, like... <laughs> that's what you get on Soul Reap as well. And it's totally irrelevant. And the thing is that... People do actually use CC a lot in PvP right now, but something like lock Lockout is way better than Fear or True Fear. And if we're, not, if we're talking about normal Lockout and not like the debuff Lockout like Galatir does, but you also don't get polymorphed, so yeah. there's obviously you're not gonna... Of course some champions might also have True Fear, like maybe some nukers, but you're not gonna pick a champion for the reason that they use fear in PvP, generally it's gonna be a liability for you, so... Yeah, Hydra-wise, like, sure, if you can give all of your champion, which is only Legendary can use that, that uh, Blessing 6-star, then you don't have to worry about the fear. Yeah, and but... it, it's again about the 6-star, like I said, 8 months of grinding... Or you can just place a Shamal, which can also boost your turn meter, so... Even if you don't care about, like, uh, PvP, but if you care about PvP even a little bit, probably you pretty much only want to get champions that uh, you use Polymorph on, like Grind 6-star Blessing, unless you get lucky and happen to pull it on them. But let's say that you don't care about PvP at all, would you rather not go for like Crossing Rend or Cruelty or something like that as 6-star? This would not, not be a... the choice. Yeah. yeah, Not even a question. Like, But... Uh, I, okay, to be fair, I guess if you happen to pull a 6-star soul on a good champion that you use Hydra, this is almost usable. Not really, because you're gonna have <laughs> you're gonna have some kind of mechanic in your team to deal with the fear, because everybody else is gonna be feared as well, and yeah. this is not gonna have, affect your teammates. But let's say in, <laughs> in a weird situation that you happen to have 6-star blessing on all of the champions on one of your Hydra teams, you could almost consider this and not not use a champion to deal with fear, but you would really never use this one, right? Yeah. Like, even, like, support character, let's say, like, Padraid. Padraid doesn't have anything besides the just L attack booster meter, right? Like, so Blessing on him doesn't really matter, but if you have a 6 star, I think you should be prefer to give him cruelty to reduce the target defense. I think that's gonna be still better than this one. Yeah, my, my bad Just if... don't attack the fear head with the Padraid, he's single target, so... Yeah, my bad if you can't see the picture perfectly, I, I can... No, no, it's it. okay, I, I have it on my monitor. Okay, good. So th then we get to the last one, which is the... Okay. Oh yeah, that's, that's the interesting one. Yeah. <laughs> is it? So, okay, last one, Cracking Roots. 
and increases the damage inflicted by this champion to stone skin and HP. Stone skin HP. To stone skin HP and 100% at 6 star. Okay, so you, you you think this is interesting? I mean, it's looking juicy in the paper, right? 100% damage increase, yeah. but it doesn't work like that. Okay, so let's let's clarify how stone skin works. This is kind of what you were talking about before. That why don't they show this in the in-game tooltip? And I I'm almost certain they don't they don't explain how stone skin works. So what no. the stone skin does at um, uh, six star and it's different at nine star, but nobody's really using the nine star set right now. But you get the shield that is fifty percent of your max HP, and then you have eighty five percent damage reduction <laughs> on the damage yeah. taken while you have that shield up. So that's gonna make you insanely tanky. I mean. If you have something like, if you have a super super squishy champion, like let's say a Ronda, and then you hit him with really really hard nuke, you might be able to kill him through stone skin. But basically, you can't kill people through stone skin. You certainly can't kill any champion that is support and has any kind of yeah, HP. Like it's impossible to champion. do. In, yeah, even even six star with this guy's like hundred percent increased damage. So let's say. I mean, champion like Dutch, you know, Ursula, Necret, Ultimate Death Knight, they are very tanky champion, right? They also have a very high HP, which is stone skin uh, HP based off your champion HP. So, yeah. you are gonna deal like with very, very strong champion. Like, uh, maybe you can show some arena showcase right now with your Rotos. You can attack one enemy under stone skin yeah. if you can find it. I so, you, you are gonna deal. I move you here a little bit just to show you that on my Angora, for instance, we have her at 6p stone skin, and it's. 146k HP. So if I get a 50% shield of that and 85% damage reduction, you're not gonna kill through that in two turns. Yeah, not you are gonna hit like 5,000, maximum 10,000 damage with the crazy high stat on your DPS champion, which is 100% increased damage of them means nothing, like literally nothing. You, you, you wanted me to see how uh, test how long it does for does take for them to kill my Ankara? No, no, just show just show your uh, damage actually against the enemy under stone skin. You know, you can see the damage. For example, your Rotos can attack uh, any target under stone skin or the uh, your best DPS champion you are using. Sure. I could do it the other way around. Everybody's using speed teams. I can't even hit any of these. Oh, yeah. Maybe this uh, Maricha team you cannot. Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah, everybody has Loka. And I, I don't think this speed team with Torwin and Rotos, they probably don't have any stone skin. But okay, let's just, um, who is the hardest city in Ugar that we can find here? Let's just, not the Rotos. Let's just go with my Angora against them and see how easily they can deal with it. Oh yeah, that can also work. We can take a look to damage the enemy Narciss dealing on you. Maybe you can move my camera there, go. Yeah, I moved a little bit. Yeah. But obviously... <laughs> 8,000 damage. Yeah. 8,000 damage, guys. And uh, I believe this Narciss is not uh, naked. <laughs> Often not. So 8,000, 6,000. So increase that 100%. Like what? 16,000? Yeah, they're like one third of the way in. And now it broke. So let's say that they did double damage. Then they would have maybe done 60% damage to my shield or whatever. But the stone skin is going to wear off eventually. So Yeah, this is going to change nothing, guys. Like, Don't give your DP champion this blessing. And to be fair, it's not like there isn't some other things that do work against stone skin, so th though they do have their own problems. And I'm not talking about like champions like Georgie that can ignore stone skin. Yeah, but, it's already ignored. But you can use burns, burns go through them, and we do have a blessing for burns. Not that it's very popular because there isn't too many burn champions, but Gizmark is kind of good mm -hmm. and popular one. I don't know how much have you seen Gizmark? Yeah, he's insane against the stone skin, but I believe for the Gizmark, that's the best blessing for him, right? Not the 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 new one. Yeah, the, the incin incinerate one. Yeah, right? this is yeah, this is the increasing damage by the amount of the HP burn, so Yeah, and, and it again, also it also does have utility that it reduces yeah. their turn meter. Yeah. Again this is also hundred percent. But this is increasing damage from HP burn actually. So they recently buffed the HP burn guys. Uh, so HP burn deal more damage enemies under stone skin. So this is pretty much going to be break the stone skin uh, if you have a Gizmak on your team. Yeah, if you have a, at least five star. So I might even like kill your team with the Gizmak damage. But yeah, I do die to Gizmak a lot. I was talking about him mm -hmm. with Drog, 
And Drog said that, I guess that's like, that's the differences in experiences, that you feel like me, that Gizmark is super strong. But Drog was saying that Gizmark is unviable, obviously because Polymorph is gonna be a problem for him. But if yeah. you only have two champions with six-star Polymorph, which is probably gonna be not most players, but most of the endgame players. But like, if you have played this game for five years, and you haven't been buying a lot of Soulstone packs, you probably have two champions at six-star blessing at this yeah. point. And that's assuming that you put both of them in Polymorph and they didn't get nerfed like like our champions did just now that you're actually able to use them in Arena. But if you do have that, then even Gizmark isn't isn't that great because it's super risky to use use uh use any kind of debuffs against a team with four or three champions with Polymorph. Mm -hmm. But by the way, I'm curious. Um, I don't think you have pulled any primals, have you? I mean, I pulled, but I didn't get any mythical champion from them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's... I still have a Mikage on from the fusion. That's all. Yeah, I actually got Mikage with the remnants from the Curse City, but I didn't. I, I take the second one. I really take the second one. What do you mean, the second one? The form? Uh, no, you mean uh, Mikage? Didn't you get the Mikage? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, I take the second Mikage. If I pull, I will maybe. Sure. Yeah, and to be fair, I think Mikage is actually one of the best Primals, even though you kind of... Or Mutix or whatever. I keep saying the Primals and everybody always <laughs> tells me that they're Mutix, but... Well, whatever. But like, I think he's probably maybe... She's probably maybe top five of Primals. I don't know if you're going to disagree with that. I think I think you are right. Like, she have a usage for everything, you know, PvE, PvP. She's amazing, both of the... Places. Yeah, I think people generally undervalue Mikake because she's a free one. But if she wasn't the free one, I think people would think she's much better than she is right now. So, I mean, there's I... so many issues with Mikake that, uh, of course, Polymorph is an issue for her. And uh, she kind of is best for speed teams in PvP. But she's good in both PvP and PvE at like highest levels and so on. Mm -hmm. I mean, on the Ultra Ant game content, obviously, we have a better mythical champion than her, like Star Sage, maybe Gizmak. Okay, or the Armas. Armas is also mythical, right? Okay, but, so he's, yeah, he's better I, than Mikage. Armas better than Mikage. Come okay, on but, now. Like. Okay, but to be fair, like you mentioned Star Sage, but we would both agree that Star Sage is literally the best champion in the game. Or do you I disagree? Agree. Yeah, so. He's actually fitting on my playstyle, you know, high resistance. Like, if I pull him one day, I will be so happy. Dude, okay. He fits any playstyle. He's so good. I mean, obviously yeah. you can you probably would build some resistance on him at least, even yeah. if even if not fully. But not only does he have like he has everything. He has CC, he has revive. He have everything. He he, he he even has a passive that he doesn't die. He just does everything. He he even like um he has utility for the team with the uh, whale, reduces their teammates' damage and so on. This isn't um even though Narcissus ignores your passives, but it doesn't ignore defense buff or whale buff. So this is actually still helpful. Unlike yeah. the Dots' passive. And Narcissus cannot one-shot him too, weirdly. His passive skill... Yeah, the, the, the passive is super strong. Should be ignore it, but I think it's heal him or some weird stuff going on there. He, yeah, he so doesn't die. He can kill the Rotos, he can kill the Taras, but he cannot kill him. Yeah. His A2 ability, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I don't know exactly why, but yeah, it's it's strong. I still feel like... I, I know this is an endless debate that people have, and it... Probably most people don't care about it because it's super endgame stuff. But I still don't like the fact that Narcissus doesn't ignore Harima passive, but maybe you disagree. It should be ignored. Yeah, it's kind of weird think. that generally everything else is ignored except except that one thing. And that one thing is really good against him. <laughs> Do you know what I did recently? <laughs> Yesterday? Yeah. Sure. I put my Harima in the regen set for Ice Golem. Because Ice Golem, you know, sometimes oh, making yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. And the person ignore the fans. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> it's my second time, I guys. Don't yeah. touch me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. You, sh you should give me that one. I I really still want to get one. Also, one thing where Harima can be really good is the like against Amius. I mean, Harima yeah. can Harima can make it super easy. Or like true because Harimus, uh, Harimus. Amius is kind of inconsistent on the second form that it can just randomly one shot one of your champions yeah, and then the battle. Yeah, ignore the fans. See, but if you have Harima on your team, it's basically safe and it's like you basically 
can kill it with almost anything. Yep. Can't really have. Yeah. I... Obviously, condition we cannot use Harima all the time, but yeah. Yeah. But by the way, so that was the new blessings, and I guess the overall verdict that was that some of them were like somewhat useful, but there's nothing that there's no end game blessing here that you're gonna farm iron twins to buy buy for a specific champion, right? Or the change your current blessing, which is uh, Plurium confirm guys, they are not gonna give us free uh, blessing switch when they release that. So if you already use your free uh, chance before, uh, changing one of this blessing going to cost you 300 champ for the each champion. Yeah. Well, That's personally, I don't think I'm... I think I'm gonna use probably the uh, Nature's Bounty blessing. Maybe the Nuris as well on a couple of champions. But I think yeah. I'm gonna put Nature's Bounty on bonds of epics and rares and that might be useful on curse city floors and that's yep. pretty much about it i mean yeah we still if we look at the old blessings there's the couple couple ones that totally dominate the scene like polymorph that's the reason why you want to farm blessings in the first place is to have polymorph and then there's a couple other exceptions like we have crossing rent even brimstone isn't really that popular in pve anymore it's nice but it's not like game altering I really wish they didn't change the stat system on the blessing, you know. So each blessing was have their own stat before, you know. So you have to force uh, your champion, you know, like if it is like defensive champion, you need to choose the blessing will give you defense stat, right? Or the like we cannot give the DPS champion to the ship because we are not getting DPS benefit from that. So maybe with this new blessing going to force us to use a champion in this specific one. If they have a unique stat bonus, you know, but we don't have anymore. Every single blessing has the same stat bonus, which well, is good in the general. But end of the day, everybody in the special end game arena using ship doesn't matter what we have using ship. Yeah, actually, I kind of agree that um, it's a good thing that all of them give the same stats, so you have more choice in like which blessing that you pick. But there's actually no choice because there's like a couple really good ones and rest of them are pretty much irrelevant yeah. and maybe couple ones that are good on one specific champion on one specific thing but i wish there was more balance around the blessings and there was many different viable strategies and options but more rpg element you know like imagine like you play exactly. an rpg game like you got an item you cannot decide which to give but yeah pillarium changed that yeah for me the most like the best part about rpg games definitely is like building our character and like deciding what kind of route you're gonna go with and like yeah the play style because it's gonna be different and you can choose your own there's not really there's not much to choose here if you're if you're even if you're a nuker you're probably still gonna go with polymorph but sure cruelty can be good on a couple of champions if they have like aoe nukes or whatever you can maybe slap that in maybe you have a speed team and you have one champion with temporal chains and other one with uh intimidating presence but outside of that you pretty much want to have polymorph on every single um pvp champion and on pve i don't think you really even really need blessings that much maybe crossing rent on tranda and maybe so, maybe use cruelty yeah. as a filler yeah. blessing but it's not even that big deal and there's not really you use it because there's nothing better to do basically yeah, special Hydra, they are obviously very important, but that's all about it. Like, you don't need them on the, any dungeon or stuff like that. Yeah, like, exactly. There's no blessing. Like, let's say that I really struggle with Curse City floor, or maybe, maybe like, let's say Tormin floor on Curse City. There isn't, like, a blessing that could fix that kind of issue. Or maybe I have trouble with campaign farming. I mean, super early game. I don't have, have enough damage to, like, kill the one-shot the waves or whatever. You're obviously not going to have, like, six star crossing rent or whatever at that stage of the game if you have some something like i don't know soul reap at one star it doesn't help you these are not impactful and it doesn't like um it doesn't feel relevant enough to like <laughs> go for them and obviously i mean you mostly have to buy the blessings anyway so i guess it might be good that way i would say that if blessings were if they had more rpg elements like you said and they were more um more farmable or more buyable because they are so expensive to get 
I might get a couple champions with Polymorph, but if it costs me like ten thousand dollars or whatever to get Polymorph, I guess somebody knows the exact number. Maybe you know. Probably but, less than that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's say let's say five thousand. I mean, it's gonna be in thousands. I'm sure. Like, let's say it costs you three thousand dollars to buy Polymorph on a specific champion. I mean, you still have to wait the time and so on. But even if I had the money, I would kind of feel bad about like doing that just to get one Polymorph or whatever. But let's say that it costs you like hundred dollars to buy a Polymorph. I would probably buy a couple champions with Polymorph. I'm just being honest. I I would do it. But the grind is so massive that I don't I don't even think about it at this point. You are buying time basically, so time is important. Yeah, it, dude, it's eight months for one one yeah. blessing, so I I guess that's it. You you don't have anything uh, anything else like specific about the blessings? No, I think we talk about uh, pretty much everything, the current existence one and the new upcoming one. And yeah, I'm not big hype of them. Uh, let us know guys if you guys disagree with us, but none of them is make me excited. That's kind of sad, you know, I was waiting like something against the uh, Armands specifically, you know. Obviously they are not going to say Armands counter blessing, <laughs> you know, but... Uh, uh, yeah, by the way, no. I think against Armas, still the Polymorph is the best, by the way. Guys. By, so. the, by the way, I agree with that. And I actually literally, I made some suggestions yesterday in CC chat. I don't know if you saw them, but I was specifically mentioning that these effects could be item sets. But I think there's many interesting things they could do, and they could be blessings as well instead of item sets. But it would be super interesting if there was a blessing that would, for instance, counter Polymorph stone skin or lockout these are very big deals in pvp and if there was a blessing for those i think that would be very interesting like let, let's say there was a blessing that it makes you immune to polymorph do you think that would be op oh yeah i mean it's a weird question so, so Dude, you are gonna choose the polymorph or the anti-polymorph blessing exactly That's... exactly <laughs> so, so, so we, which one is more op that your one champion can't get polymorphed or you pick the polymorph. But e even if that's too good, maybe it could be a six piece item set or what, whatever. But I definitely think that Plarium could explore these kind of uh, ways to counter the very dominant mechanics in the game. Yeah. Actually, was uh, have an idea, blessing idea for them, you know, like for the Hydra wise, especially. You know, sometimes we have a team, but we are missing one debuff, right? One debuff we needed. You know, if they give a blessing they have a chance to place the debuff we are going to choose can be decrease speed can be block buff you know yeah that, that would be super that will be interesting that will be yeah. like take lots of people attention actually you know you can put hey bro i will go she have a decrease defense and the block buff but you can also give her decrease speed you know that will be so sick actually yeah and i think that would be like helpful for everybody that yeah if you're early game you might need like one specific thing that you just don't happen to have maybe you need a, like a De decrease speed on a specific boss battle or whatever, Dark Fae, you can't kill it and you don't have any champion with decrease speed. It could be super worth it for them. And then maybe somebody super end game wants to get, uh, might, might be also decrease speed, but maybe like, let's say Hex for Hydra. And you can choose which you get. I think that would be nice. Yeah, that would be nice mechanic, but... Even, even, more... even if it was like 50% chance or whatever, it definitely wouldn't be 100%. Definitely worth it. Yeah, it would still be a nice update yeah but to be fair i mean blessings are still like a side part of your wheels and champions so it's not like they can be too much i totally understand that it's not like they want one specific blessing to like make it so that you can complete the content and cheese it that would be maybe too much and maybe that's the reason why people hate polymorph that it's so impactful in pvp I mean, polymorph is yeah very annoying but polymorph also can be your protection against the enemy debuffer you know so yeah against armas for example yeah i i know i knew you, so. you you were gonna agree with me because i think most most content creators are like they are like fully aboard on polymorph uh nerf train they hate it and they don't see any upsides of polymorph but pretty sure from what you just said you also like see that there's kind of a reason why we have polymorph even though it might be too OP and annoying to play against, but yeah. we would need some kind of mechanics to counter, like tons of the speed team. Yeah, speed teams is, with tons of CC and debuffs. Yeah, Madame Ceres coming back then <laughs> if, if they nerf the polymorph, you know, everybody gonna use Madame Ceres. 
Yeah. And, uh, I mean, it's, yeah, compli and it's complicated to balance this out when we have stone skin and lockout and polymorph and million different debuffs. It certainly is not like something you can easily fix. Yeah. By, by the way, I'm curious. So you have been playing Live Arena lately, I guess? Yeah, I'm gold for. What, what what points you are? Because I feel like you have pretty pretty strong uh, account at this point. What I'm using, you mean? No, no. I mean, like, what rating you are and how often you play Live Arena. Do, do you uh... like it? I mean, you of course, you don't have the best accounts. You, you're going to meet much stronger accounts. But you have a, a lot of good stuff right now. I think you have Sifi, you have uh, Warlord, you have Harima. You have a, you even yeah, have I'm... enough shards to get the Narsus. So, are you having fun in Live Arena? Uh, I mean, most of the time, anyway, plays a, f a six mythical, five mythical champion. That's not fun, obviously. Plus yeah. four, Lazarus fully sanded. Most of the time, I'm seeing that on the Live Arena gold for guys. I'm close to five thousand actually. Oh, okay, so you, yeah, so you're you're pretty much the same rating as me at this point. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying my best, obviously, but uh, most of the time is. I can't say it's a balanced matchmaking. Uh, yeah. I'm still using Arix, by the way. Are you really? Still using Arix. I am. You can check my vote. I'm still using Arix against this mythical guy, stuff like that. Well, okay. Uh, I'm curious. Against what kind of teams do you have enough damage that you can actually kill them with Arix? Because I certainly don't. Arix can kill anything. Anything. It's just going to take some time. Like, doesn't matter how tanky are they. She but, can. But... Okay, but. <laughs> Okay, look, Arix cannot kill ultimate that night or the maybe Phytheon because of the affinity. But I'm not bringing her alone. Like, mostly I'm using Arix with Narciss maybe or the Harima. If they ban one of them, uh, Are you just I using will be having... Two Nukers or three? Two. Two. I'm using two Nuker plus Mikage. So if they ban my Harima, for example, Arix is alone, then Mikage L attack is actually gonna be at me to kill ultimate that night. Yesterday, actually, I was a match. Uh, maybe you can uh, check that uh, after the video. Mm -hmm. It took 7 uh, minutes to kill the ultimate that night, I was a Mikage, enemy has a Wukong, do you know how much damage Wukong did? Zero. Every time he come back, I just Arix one shot. Every time, because my Arix has a life harvest, yeah. Life harvest is very strong on her, I wish she had a 6 star, she had only a 4 star, so basically guys, life harvest, reducing the enemy max HP when they come back live, but it, at the same time, boosting your turn meter. So every time Wukong is come back, it's boosting my Arix turn meter, and uh, she's smacking Wukong again, and she, Wukong did a zero damage. Wait, wait, do, do you have, what level of blessing do you have on Arix? Four, four star. Oh, uh, okay. Did you, did you like buy it or you, you got lucky with it? I, I bought it. Okay, nice. Four star life harvest. Oh uh, yeah, oh yeah, life harvest. I, I was looking at cruelty because that's what people usually, usually go for, but I, I guess it makes sense the way that you put so, it. It's filling her turn meter by 10% at the moment on the 3 star bonus. Oh yeah, okay, that's fine. Again, it's not that uh, big, but her A1, I mean her any skill also filling her turn meter for the each crit attack, so... Mm. If I have a 6 star, man, look at that 30% fill turn meter. That would be very nice. Yeah, you usually see it on supports and not nukers, and I think cruelty is super good on him, but of course, if you have... Especially if it's against something like... Wukong, Wukong that you can kill at yeah. some point, then it's gonna be OP. So you basically use Arix as a Wukong counter? Yeah, I am. Okay, th that Because does... he's squishy, it's, it's not hard to kill the Wukong, you know? Yeah. So yeah. they are reviving or he's coming back live, and I just have to use A1, not even A2. And, and, A1 yeah. attack an enemy, so. And then it increases the damage against everybody else as well, since you're constantly farming turn meter from the Wukong. Yeah, let's say enemy is a duchess, you know, it's hard to, that is not gonna die that easily, right? She's gonna bring them back, but every time she bring them back, they are gonna lose some max HP, so... Yeah, yeah. Life 5 is very strong. Obviously, against the Maricha, you are gonna be struggle a little bit. But again, Mikage uh, going to help me, so they can only ban one champion, so I usually use two DPS. Harima Arix, or the Wukong Arix, or the Narcissus Arix, they are uh, the champion I'm using, not big fan of Rotos. So... And... Uh, uh, if they ban my DPS, then Mikage gonna be at me with the L attack, so. So what about when we get Marius then? Are you planning to use him? Arena, no. <laughs> but he also does AoE like Arix. Yeah, doesn't, ship. Doesn't ship. Seem, <laughs> not, yeah, okay, and he does the accuracy buff on himself, so. That, I mean, to be fair, I mean, Arix does debuffs as well, but he doesn't do accuracy buff, and I guess you didn't build him with any accuracy. 
Hey, you talking about instead of Arik's position? I mean, I don't really remember his uh, A1 multiplier. Uh, He's a defense champion, right? Yeah. yeah. I think it was two. I, I mean, Arik's A1 isn't... I think, isn't Arik's A1 0 0.22? Uh, I can't take a look for it. It isn't like insanely high either. But I think Marius was two, but you do get those uh, extra attacks against Mutikals when they change forms or when you get Termiter decrease. And then he does have the triple hitter A3, which works well with cruelty, though you might be But you forget an Arik's passive skill. That you heal and get it's turn meter. What makes the Arix uh, very special? I mean, she cannot Sh sure. get one shot from Harimo, for example, from that uh, passive skill, because each crit attack is going to be heal her. And anybody yeah. on your team. So if they attack your C50 crit, she's going to get healed. And uh, feel turn meter as well. So each crit attack is going to feel her turn meter too. So she's going to be super fast. Yeah. I actually, yeah. using the, I have two Arix, one of them on the spider and uh, four piece slayer set. She can farm solo spider hard 10 and one minute and I, I can farm my foot on the hard 10 so yeah i feel like you're one, kind, i feel like you're kind of selling me on that point heals this champion <laughs> by five percent for each crit it's not that big heal i feel like the turn meter increases almost but made... she's a high hp she's a hp base so that's the another good thing about her so for the marius for example you need to increase the defense champion right he has a self mm. bulb but uh, if the enemy have a lookout champion you have to use a one skill so sure, Arix, but uh, or damage HP, so. But I think, uh, I mean, I guess it depends what boss you have and how strong yeah. the enemy build is, but Harima can definitely one-shot Arix. I mean, no. That's for sure. No. I, they, they, they can kill Arima your... Arima A2 you talking? They, they can kill or your... A3. They, A3 can. They, they, they can kill you with like two hits of the A3. They don't even have to hit you three times. No, no, A3 can one-shot her. But A2 cannot uh, one-shot her. And usually people are using A2, uh, Harima, obviously, to defense up his uh, defense. I mean, mm -hmm. increase her defense. Uh, but they are usually using that on the Arix, and each crit attack feeling her, uh, uh, my bad, uh, healing her by 5% HP. So mm -hmm. it's a bad idea. So if you guys have Harima, don't use A2 on the Arix, guys. Use somebody else. Okay, well, I need to <laughs> I need to watch your stream when you're doing live. Yeah, watch. Because... I, yeah. I want I want to see how you how you destroy the Harimas with Arix because that doesn't sound like an easy match for me. But no, I... it's definitely not easy. Harima also strong affinity, you know. But yeah, really yeah. depends the rest of the team and uh, what I have. I usually using a CP and the Anchor there, so they are kind of protecting me. Oh, by the way, that's interesting. Is what you said about Anchor earlier. So we both came to the same conclusion that we have six star blessing on Duchess, and we still prefer to use Anchor. I think yeah. you still have five star on her, right? You don't have six yeah. star. Yeah. Yeah. I'm waiting the purchase uh, if the shops show me one day. But yeah, Ankara right now have a five star, and I prefer that over the Duchess six star. Even I actually recently rebuilt my Alva, she have a four star, and I think, let's say, enemy picked the Sifi and Ankara before me, then I have to place another support. I think I prefer Alva over six star Duchess. Really? Okay. Yeah. Alva is, Alva is amazing, man. Like, wh Luton cleans. Wh why do you prefer? Oh, okay. Because Alva is a heal. Mm -hmm. And Alva cooldown is uh, shorter than Duchess. And to be fair, the, uh, the Alva whale can be super annoying sometimes when you can't hit like their nuker or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Like Alva A1 can play a perfect whale too on your uh, champion who is low HP. So if the enemy team uh, has a single target, he cannot target it basically like a Duchess, you know? It's a little bit more uh, complicated, but yeah. Yeah, but you you have like very high uptime. Sometimes like if you fight somebody with like Ragas and Ailva, it can be super annoying and I'm not able to kill their nuker at all. I mean, against Ragash, Ragash can eventually kill your Dutch, you know, like also yeah. the same affinity. But Alva, Alva is also strong affinity and Alva with two turn block debuff. So Ragash going to be struggle to uh, the decrease defense and stun. Do, do you have Ragash? I do. Yeah. Just plus zero? Do you have him empowered? No, no, it's just plus zero. I only have two empowerment. One of them plus one rotos, the other plus two rule. That's all. I just recently maxed my faction guardian, like last week actually. Sure. But First faction guardian after almost five year playtime, guys. Skinwalker. No, 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 no. I was, yeah, I was looking for Mario's. Sure. Um. Wait, which one do you want to see, Ragash? 
I, I was thinking about Marius actually. So you're not you're not hyped about Marius at all. You're not even. I I'm sure you're gonna try him in Live Arena at least. No. I mean, like I'm still very behind on the missions. So, Same. <laughs> yeah, like because some of the mission like get mythical chest plate. I'm like, man, I'm gonna stuck there like if I don't spend lots of the jam on the energy, you know. Mm. So I feel like that's gonna be waste of the resources, especially for the free to play perspective. And there is no reason to rush for it. Just leave it to time. Eventually, I will get him. Yeah, I wish. Uh, I was kind of thinking that there could be a good chance, but I guess it didn't happen. I guess they could still do a separate event, but I almost thought that maybe there was a chance that they would give us a Marius, uh, like soul or blessing on the like the path to him. And if you were to get him at maybe like four to six star blessing, that would have been good. But they didn't give it, so. I mean, I was waiting for scenario on the Marius mission, you know, like 100% clear the curse door, stuff like that. So I'm okay with the current uh, missions. They're actually sure. very easy, easier than Romanto, I would like to say. They're just time consuming, guys, so that's all. Y yeah, I, I mean, it's very long time since I did Romanto missions, so I kind of forget about them. But I think it took, like, as you can see, I'm like way behind because I was clanless for a week. and I, I can't see your screen right now, by the way. Uh, I'm seeing my computer. Wait, oh fuck. I forgot about that, my bad. You, no you, should, you should have told me. Yeah, I, I'm stuck here because I was clanless for a week and I couldn't do any missions because there was some Hydra mission or whatever. And I'm like, I guess you're on the last uh, chapter, right? No, I'm not. I'm on the second chapter too. I'm in the oh, library okay. mission right now. I need to win 20 fight and uh, it's not going well. But I do recall that the Roman <laughs> missions, even though they weren't that hard, for me specifically, but they were super time consuming. And of course the Gloop missions were yeah. in famous. The Defense Secret Room was annoying. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I, I guess we pretty much, we, we had a super, I knew this was gonna happen. I It was supposed to be a small video, but I knew it was gonna be like one hour video, so. I mean, we are two guys uh, who love to play the game, man. Enjoying the raids still, you yeah. know, so. Dude, I, we can talk a lot. I, I think you're gonna beat me, but I want to meet you in Live Arena. I don't think we have ever fought. Have we fought? I mean, if you are going to use Rotos, I'm literally struggling against him. You know, Rotos what, is the best Arix counter, by the way. Oh, but so... you're gonna be Karima. What do you mean? You're gonna be Karima and Lockout? Yeah, but you are gonna win Arima, so... <laughs> okay, but wait, let me... If you get the first pick, I don't think I can beat you. Because you're gonna get, like, Harima, Lockout and uh, Armands. I don't think I can beat you then. If I'm if I'm first pick, then I might be able Maybe to Maybe you are gonna surprise, but I'm not using Armands on the library. What? It's still notebook. Yeah. Why? Because... I don't like speed meta. I'm, yeah. My speed is not crazy high, you know, Dude. like even Pilesa Arman's there. People oh, gonna yeah. ban him, but still. I didn't even go 5 star for him, man. I, I stopped at the 4 star. Okay, so this is my Arman's build. It's not like the fastest Arman's at all. I mean, I'm like... It's a stone skin build, so... Yeah, yeah, but I'm 361 speed. I'm not fastest. It's still very good. I mean, he's crazy good. He's generally... Almost every time enemies must ban him, so... You yeah. should totally yeah. use him. I should be, but uh, I'm like, if I'm not starting first, and if the enemy plays a Sifi first, if they steal my uh, girl, you know, then I play, uh, I go like Mikage plus Arman, so. Sure, but, 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 wait, so you do if use If I'm starting first, I'm going Sifi. Wait, so you do use Arman, or you don't use him at all? No, I'm not. Yeah, okay. But I mean, you... uh, if the enemy plays a Sifi first, then I am. Otherwise, I'm not. Oh, okay, okay. So, but. Do you use your wall or you feel like he's not good anymore with all of the primal Again, champions? Again, like I use Warlord on Takti Marana, that's so, all. Like, I'm guys, like, my speed is not that high. Like, I mean, I can actually make very high speed. I checked it recently. Uh, but still, like, uh, as a fruit play, like, there's always somebody gonna be faster than you. And on the speed meta, if they are faster, you are dead. But by the way, right? what do you mean by high speed? What's the speed you can do? I mean, I checked it recently on the Hal Hades optimizer, and I believe the maximum I can get 415. This okay. is without fetching Guardian Max on the Sifi, so yeah. I can get another 10, which is 425. Yeah. And let's say if she's plus 4, we are getting 50 more, right? So I can get like almost 440, 450. With okay. my current gear, that's very oh, impressive, actually. Yeah, yeah, it is. You're you're faster than me. I actually thought I was kind of kind of getting fast. I was calculating that I can get my arbiter to 391, 
but that's also like uh without blessing without touch and guardians and yeah. without empowerment so with those I like, it's a six star so yeah so with, with those i could get to like um was it 426 or i guess uh, higher than that with with high empowerment but again that's a perfect scenario i need to get the five more cp for this so i mean four more yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> so that's not gonna gonna happen i i think i i will get my arbiter definitely faster than 400 speed at some Man, point my arbiter missing gear like you have no idea. yeah he's on the picture more but to be honest i don't really use my arbiter and i guess you don't yeah, use yours I'm, either I'm, yeah so, I've been uh, using Go second team for a very long time since the, I got the Duchess actually maybe over yeah. two years so I have a lot of experience on that. Same. I mean, I mean, I was using, I was using Go second teams way before I even got Duchess because it's. I think I got my, my Duchess maybe like one year ago or two years ago, but way before that. I mean, I was I was using Brockney instead of Duchess and before Brockney, I was using Madame Ceres in shield set. I mean, <laughs> I was never gonna go with any type of speed. I think I was using Valkyrie. To cut in with Trotos at some point. That's yeah. the kind of stupid stuff. Yeah, that I was... was good team. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. But I okay. mean, guys, like if the all of your fight uh, you have a speed team, let's say, but the enemy started before you, then you don't have a, that much option. You know, you need to focus on the go second team. So yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I think okay. that's what I, I have a speed team. Of course, I'm using on tactic arena, but here's the hobbies that working. I'm using speed team that I can definitely go first before the enemy team. Yes. So which means against the enemy's slow team. Yeah. Okay. So I'm using my Armas there, you know, Mikage there, Warlord there, and with the Wukong, you know. So I'm definitely going before them. And I'm using my go second team against enemy speed team. So this is always that work. Yeah, it's the exact same stuff that I do. Yeah. So we we definitely have the same perspectives. I, I guess um I guess even on this stuff we have the same same uh feeling then that you don't use Arbiter, you stop using Dustus. So basically if you need attack buff in live arena. Mika Gage. I don't. Or... I'm not using attack DPS. Not, not at all. No, they are so squishy. So. Oh, okay, okay. I, I was they are not say... fitting on the gold second team. So. I, I I was gonna say that Mika, you don't use Wukong. I what? mean, Wukong still can work without increased attack, and he can still the enemy increase attack. Sure, so. Sure, sure. But my my point was that actually the best attack buff right now, at least for me, is actually Mika Gage. And Mika Gage also with so yeah. True. Yeah, so I'm not using that as so Arbiter. If I need attack buff, it's gonna be Mika. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Like she have more than that, you know. So she can also control the enemy. But but yeah, I I actually stopped using my Xena because I don't. Ah, think... you should be. She's still so strong, very strong. Against special against the Sifi team. Uh, it's good against Sifi, but the thing is that there's so many like Mythicals and champions with uh, stone skin. I just don't think I can use her right mm -hmm. now. She's True. good against speed teams with Sifi. But I don't see them that often anymore. I mean, yeah, it... I put my DP champion in stone skin as well. Like uh, I rebuilt my Arix and the Harima recently, and yeah. they are heavy four piece stone skin and a little. So o often these days, if I meet a speed team, it's not like something like Arbiter, Sifi, Lockout, Ronda, Charged. That used to be very common. But these days, it's like Shu yeah. Chen. Galatir, Armands, and then two Nukers. And yeah, that's the Sipi like, team, guys. So good luck to kill them. <laughs> yeah, Xena doesn't work against that anymore. So true, true. I, I, I totally abandoned him and I put put my Wukong in, in my yeah. Xena gear. Wukong very strong. Yeah, and he's basically the the attack Nuker that I use unless we count Krotos. But it's not. I mean, it's not like I'm using a lot of attack Nukers either. So. People really enjoy Rotos uh, still. Do you agree with them? I feel like Rotos has a lot of counter, like Harima, Ultimate Death Knight. I so, mean, don't get me wrong, he's still very strong Narsus, A2. Yeah, I was actually talking about that on my last live arena video. <laughs> I even have my Stalto scared, but not Attack Nugras. I think sometimes I get like too frustrated about Rotos because obviously, like you said, there is tons of big counters to him. Not just UDK and Harima, but there's many other ones. Many champions can multi-hit him. Uh, and then uh, our base is basically like a UDK with some extra stuff. It's not like he has easy times anymore. Many champions do multi-hits. Narciss is going to one-shot him even with a single single hit on the A2. But, and obviously I do have Rotos in like good gear and so on. And he scales very well with gear. But Rotos is so good that when I look at my other champions... I who am I going to pick against them? They are not going to survive, and Rotos has the best chance to survive. So often I end up picking Rotos even against uh, Harima, 
and then I do big Wukong against UDK. That's that's generally what I like to do, that if I'm not able to ban the UDK and to have it, but not Harima, then I will go with Wukong, because he, he, he will be able to deal with UDK eventually when I get rid of the stone skin. And Rotos, even though Harima matchup isn't super preferable, but if I'm able to survive, I can kill Harima team eventually. So he's that yeah. good that even when I on purpose pick him against a counter, he's still often my best pick, like outside of Narcissus. But if I meet like a Harima team and my nukers are Rotos and Narcissus, they are usually gonna ban my Narcissus and I kind of can assume that. But it's not like I'm gonna pick something like <laughs> Like Senna against it, and even like Staldus wouldn't wouldn't survive long enough, and it's not able to one shot them. So I feel like I'm often forced to use Rotos Seven against teams that counter him. Yeah, I mean it's still very strong. I'm actually struggling against them, you know, because like I said, Arix. I mean Rotos is the big Arix counter because every time Arix use the A1, Rotos get extra turn. Yeah, and, <laughs> and he's always get an extra turn. So yeah, and I actually recently changed my Rotos to Polymorph. Even though oh, yeah. the Ward of the Fallen is so good on him, but Polymorph is just so needed. And like I said, I have two champions with six star blessing, and I'm not really using Duchess that much. I specifically use her when I need the Polymorph. And kind of the same with Rotos, that him having the Polymorph makes him better. And maybe Definitely. if I maybe if I had if I didn't have Polymorph on him and I had it on other champion, I definitely would use my Rotos less. But since he is still a, very strong and he does have polymorph he works against teams that have encounter him and then sometimes if i just meet a team with like normal revivers and he's not locked out they don't have harima they don't have udk the fight is over in like five seconds i kill both of the revivers on the first turn and that's it it doesn't happen super often when i fight against good teams or good accounts but sometimes maybe i get him as a last pick and they they forget that I can go with Rotos and it's a super easy battle. It's still strong against Taras, Marichka too, so Rotos and... Yeah, I think yeah. Rotos is great against yeah Taras and Marichka and teams with like multiple revivers. He can really yeah. deal with them while some others might struggle with damage, but there's a lot of like CC and champions that just can kill him before he gets turned, so that's usually what I struggle with. And Harima and UDK. Yeah. I hope we can face on the live one day. Yeah, actually, actually, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna stream on Friday on the, I think it's the second time slot. You, you might be. I don't know if you're online that time. I mean, I'm you sit. No, no, the, the third uh, time slot. I'm gonna stream on the third slot, time slot on Friday. Yeah, I think that's the when I, I'm uh, doing a stream as well. Yeah. So this is up. This is when the Pilgrim release uh, embargo, right? Lift an embargo usually. Yeah, yeah, usually it's uh, yeah, that yeah, time. yeah. That's time I'm doing my live item. Yeah, so I'm gonna stream on Friday. All right. <laughs> maybe, maybe if you do live arena, maybe. we meet. We're super close. Right. I mean, you're like, uh, did you say like five thousand points? Close four four point nine something like that. Okay, but we're close enough that uh, there's yeah. a very. I mean, I'm chance. facing dude with the ten thousand points. So yeah, we're definitely <laughs> gonna meet if we queue at the same time, like at least a few times. So. All right. I, I think I'm gonna lose, but we will see about. No, no, no. I, I, I actually you have more PVP experience than me and can PVP. Uh, I mean, you're pretty experienced in PVP, even if it's like, maybe, maybe like you do other stuff as well. You're not as uh, only care about PVP like me, but I mean, you have done a lot of PVP and like, I mean, you, you have done the same thing as me that you have like done deck team and so on without the best account, and you're like used to these kind of matchups and so on. You have like grinded through the PvP and not stream steamrolled it with like speed teams and like one shots. So, but actually, do you know uh, Bionic? Yep. So he also does stream, and it's kind of funny because he he's obviously I think he's American, right? He plays on different mm -hmm. time slots. I don't meet him that often, but th there has been few times where I meet him multiple times in a row. He's probably the streamer that I have fought most. And it's actually surprising that you and I haven't fought at all. Because I don't really play, like, I definitely, very rarely do I play on the last time slot. Usually I play either on the second I met or... the work on this time, so on yeah. the top two. Usually I play on the second or third time slot. Very rarely on the fourth or the first. 
So I, I feel like I should meet you instead of him, but I have never met you before, so... Yeah, weird. I try to do it every day if I'm uh, available at this time fight. Yeah, to, okay, to be fair, I haven't been as active in live arena lately as I used to be. It's It's been hard and I had some other stuff and I didn't play it every day, to be fair, so... Yeah. I mean, it's really hard for me a live not gonna lie on these days. Gold 4 is another level, guys, like, mostly you are seeing is the full mythical team and... Or the loss of 6 star champion plus for empowerment, stuff like that. So it's kind of challenging, but try our best, what can we do? Yeah, honestly, I feel like it's often about RNG, not, not about like RNG in the battles, but who do I get as my enemy and how good champions they have. Because if you can see my page right now, many of these teams are not that bad. Yeah. Like like this team with Mikake, Cardiel, Ukko and Harima. Well, it's been a, like almost one year I didn't say any single Ukko. <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's not that bad. But then, then there are some teams that have like four champions that are plus four primals and goodbye. <laughs> I don't have any chance against those. So actually yeah. uh, yesterday when I played, I think I got pretty lucky and there wasn't like top accounts playing. So sometimes it looks way worse than it does right now. Yeah, sometimes uh, you have a good RNG, you are winning a lot. Sometimes it's opposite, you are losing a lot. Yesterday yeah. I lose a lot, so I didn't do much. Yeah. Anyway, it's a super long video. I feel like we almost stopped it maybe like 30 it minutes like ago, editing. <laughs> but then we kept going. You probably, do you have anything else to say? Uh, not really, that, my you, friend. that you want to talk about? Okay, so not really. in that case, make sure to um, check out Final Ken Batsy's YouTube channel and his stream. You you won the streamer of the year, right? Yes. I, I, didn't, I didn't double check it afterwards, but I'm pretty sure you won it. I voted for yes, you. Yes, streamer of the year. I, I think They didn't even give me free Shamal, oh my god. <laughs> Did, did you get like do you get anything for it i guess you nah. yeah nothing. nothing i feel like they did you did you get the plarium um the package that they sent to content creators did you get that one ship one you mean shirt sure. yeah i got that one yeah i didn't get it yet but i feel like those people that won the content creator awards it would have made sense that you get got something extra but i guess you didn't yeah i mean i'm I agree with you. It's not because of I won, but at least you know, like special uh, yeah. title in the game or the avatar yeah, that I'll we can show. That will be cool, you know. Like not not something valuable, you know, like uh, as a money, but yeah, a, a little bit anticlimactic to be honest. Like since you men mentioned the avatar, I mean they have been giving avatars for uh, uh, Facebook contests and whatever. Easily they yeah. could have given you guys avatars, but it's not that big deal. But you won. You def definitely deserve to win. I don't know, did you check what kind of uh, percentage of the votes did you get? But I think when I voted for you, you had like 36% vote. It, yeah, it was super I think high. it was something like that. So huh? there was a four people, so even 26% is enough to win, right? On the four people. Yeah, so, yeah. No, no, I mean, that that's like a high high margin because that means like yeah. nobody was I mean, I'm close. streaming every day over three years, man, so yeah. I'm, I'm working a lot, so... Yes, you're, you're very active, yeah. Wait. You stream literally every day, seven days a week. Except Sunday. I stopped streaming on Sunday, like since the last year, because I need some break. Yeah. Sunday well, we play a different game. That's and, odd. Yeah. Sometime if there is a different game, and yeah, I need to rest a little bit. I'm, <laughs> it's it's too, too much. <laughs> Sometime you know, I feel like I'm seeing like a Harima in my dream, you know, stuff like that. Hey, that's not a bad dream, by the way. Yeah, I did. I, I have said it before on my videos many times, but. I don't really watch Twitch that much, but when I do, it's specifically like I watch your channel or Rats, and I open Twitch to watch you guys. But I don't really yeah, I watch. Yeah, I see a lot on my stream. Yeah, I don't really watch Twitch. It's not just something I never was into that much. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> you're grinding it super hard if you're streaming six days a week. Holy moly, that's like, damn. And how you do like like eight hour streams or whatever? Six hour. Six hour. Mostly. Yeah. I try in six hour. Yeah, uh, from I'm definitely not gonna do it six days a week like you. For now on, I'm planning to stream on Mondays and Fridays. So, but yeah, I see your plot push. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think about it? I mean, you stream only on Twitch, right? You don't dual stream and you don't stream on. I mean, YouTube? I don't like to dual stream, you know. But the problem is you cannot listen music on the YouTube, guys. So yeah. And on the dual stream, so Twitch has, uh, I mean, OBS has a. I would say that uh, options that you can uh, remove your music from your vote. 
But if you do stream that, this option is gone. So you either not gonna listen any music or you are gonna listen elevator music or stuff like that. Well, and uh, whenever I stream on the YouTube, I was getting like maybe 80 viewer or stuff like that. Obviously, I'm not doing that for the money, but the YouTube pay me for six hour stream like 0.01 dollar. I'm like, okay, I prefer to listen music. Thank you. You know, so yeah okay yeah i'm keeping my youtube content for the video i'm making you know video not the stream uh, sometimes obviously i'm uh, putting my vote over there whenever i do your my hydra run people actually love my hydra content so i'm recording on the stream then i'm putting on the youtube edit stuff like that yeah i, but I know you stream on the youtube is first reason music guys we cannot listen to music so yeah I, I know you always like on the stream you like cut off and you like you start to narrate when you start making a video you, you often do that like when you pull shards or something then yeah exactly into account yeah but yeah i mean i know i know opening shard i cannot open shard a lot on my account so thankfully people come in uh, so yeah. i can open them yeah so yeah same maybe i will stream on twitch at some point but i think it's just easier to stream on youtube for now but Maybe I'll try it as well, but you prefer I mean, you, you can try, like, if you're not listening to music, just do, like, duo stream. It's not a hard thing to set up, you know? But uh, how can you monitor both of the chats, then, if you do it? There is a application uh, oh, you okay. can enable on the OBS. It can show both of the chat at the same time, from YouTube and the TV, so... And when you write uh, something on the chat, it's right both of the platform. Maybe I can help you with that, don't worry. Yeah, <laughs> maybe I'll try it, but it was like a high bar for me to even try streaming. But I think I'll definitely try Twitch at some point, and maybe I need to do the dual one. I know that, uh, like, Bionic does the dual one, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But usually when you build your community in the platform, uh, you are obviously going to get more view on that platform, you know? So my community is from Twitch side, so whenever I stream on the YouTube, I'm not yeah. getting lots of view, which is understandable. But if you want uh, more people see you, obviously do a stream is better. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's why it was just easier to stream on YouTube when I already make content there. And obviously I would get like zero views if I started streaming on Twitch and it would be a long grind like you have to actually get anything there. But okay, let's not chill about my channel. So make sure to follow Final Ken Bachi on Twitch and YouTube. He's very active streamer, as you heard, six, uh, six days a week. And it's very like, um, very like grindy content. You're obviously not, you're not buying soul stones. You don't have the. You Bro, have it's really hard to stream six hour a day for free to play resources. Mm. Like, yeah, you, you like, have no idea. Like, you, you obviously have played the game for some time, and you have some good champions. But it's very hard grind that you don't have the best stuff, and you're trying to do like PvP and Duck Team and Curse City and everything else, basically with. Or like with with the free to play stuff that you get from playing the game, and it's not as easy as it's like. It could be no. easier if you had like every primal champion and so on. Yeah, I still know like on the mythical side, same for you. So yeah, the, the, hopefully the, one day. Hopefully good one. I really want a good one. I don't want a bad one. Yeah, the, the thing with mythicals, which I've been telling myself the entire time I played raid. But there's like a couple really good mythicals, you could get super lucky. Like if you just have one good primal session and let's say you pull like, uh, I don't know, Galatir and one more good primal, you're done. Like you never need I can retire good... it. I can retire it. Yeah, you, you, you never <laughs> need a good primal champion again and you're all... Ah, exactly. Your account is always going to be good. So. Every stress is going, you know, you can open your shard without any stress anymore. Yeah. But yeah, do, do you have anything else to say? Uh, thank you for the having me. Uh, it was very fun. Uh, we talked lots of the stuff. Hopefully, people are enjoy that. And uh, make sure to follow the Shine as well, guys. Sub his channel too. And uh, yeah, that's all. Thank and you. if you found this conversation interesting, it's a while ago, but we did another video on Final Ken Bachi's channel where we talked about uh, resistance, and it was also very like PvP related. That we were talking about resistance and how it's not really. Reason. Yeah, how it's not very balanced in the game and not very popular. If that sounds interesting, then make sure to check out that video on Gamebatch's channel. But yeah, that's it. Have a nice day and see ya.